there was a Simpsons episode where he starts mixing like um, sleeping pills with like pet pills and he's driving his truck. And I'm like, I want to see what happens. He mixed Red Bull and Nitro cold brew. <laughs> like, There's a lineup of drugs. <laughs> this is going to be so fun. This is good. Yeah. Let's start with love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So one, one thing we'll eventually somehow talk about, it'll be a theme throughout is that you're also Russian. Yes. A little bit less than me. But how uh, lot am I? Because I'm from Ukraine. Oh, you're from Ukraine. Love. Not, okay. Wow. No, because you came here a little bit when you were younger. Yeah. I, I I came here when I was 13, so I saturated a little bit of the Russian soul. I, I marinated in the Russian I'm, soul a little deep. I haven't told anyone this, but I'll be glad to tell you, Davidish. Um, I haven't been back since I was two, and next summer it looks like me and my buddy Chris Williamson, who's also a podcaster. He's British. Modern wisdom. He looks like Apollo. We're, we looks like we got a videographer. We're Which gonna, Apollo? Apollo the Creed? god. He looks like the oh. god Apollo. Yeah, he's like a model. I thought, I thought um, you were talking about Rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go for the first time to see where I came from, which is in Ukraine. It. We're gonna go to Lvov and either Saint Petersburg or Moscow. Probably Saint Petersburg or both. It's gonna be intense. It's gonna be a lot of panic attacks. I feel. And your Russian is okay. Как ты думаешь? Хорошо, понимаешь? No, you, you can't talk Russian in Ukraine, or it's like a, it, they get offended. Yeah, but then you also want to go to Russia. Yeah. I don't know. For me, I, there's several people in Russia I want to interview on a podcast. Okay. So one one of them is uh, Gagarin Perlman, which is a mathematician, and the other person is Putin. You know what my favorite Putin story is? Do you know this? No. When he had Merkel with him, do you know this story? No. Merkel's scared of dogs. Like petrified of dogs, so he brings in his like 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 a uh, um, black lab. It's a Labrador. It's like the sweetest animal, and it's all over her. And there's pictures, and she's sitting like this, and she's terrified. <laughs> and he's like, "What's wrong, Angela?" He's just completely trolling her. Yeah, he's aware of the sort of uh, the narrative around him. Yeah, and then he plays with it. Yes. He enjoys it. It's a very Russian thing. My friend wanted to do a film about me. He goes, I realized you guys aren't like us at all. You just like, like look at us. And then I started telling him stories about the upbringing. And he's like, oh my God. And as I'm telling them, I'm like, wow, this stuff is really crazy. Like what, how we are wired. Who's the we? Your friend is? The Russian. The friend's American. I'm saying the yeah. way Russians are brought up yeah. and the way maybe, I don't think it was just my family. I bet you had similar things. Like the, I, Here's an example. I, I was... I had a buddy staying with me. He had a problem with his roommate, so he crashed in my place. Fine. I went to the gym. And I come back, and he goes, oh, there was... And my apartment building is for four apartments, so it's not like a huge thing. He goes, oh, there was someone knocking at your door. So, you know, I, I, I told him, blah, blah. And, and for me, and I want to know if you're the same way, if I'm at someone's house that's not my own and someone knocks on the door, I wouldn't even think to answer it. Like if I had an apple here, maybe I'd eat it, I'd cut it, whatever. I'm not gonna, it just doesn't enter my head to smash into my face. But the, the thought of answering the door, if it's not my house, it would never enter my head. Would it enter your head? No, but why? But he's an American, so someone's at the door, he goes and opens it, even though it's not his house. I would never do that. I would never think to do that. That is so strange that you pick some very obscure thing to delineate Americans and Russians. I don't think that's obscure because I think it speaks to how we perceive strangers. With Americans, everyone's friendly, and with us, it's like no, no, like you have that moat, and I think that's a that percolates into many different aspects of how we relate to people, and I had to oh, undo true. a lot of that. That's true. You're right. There's uh, the relationship I formed there were in Russia were very deep, yes, and close, and then there's the strangers, the other that you don't trust by default. It takes a long time to go over the moat of trust there. for a long time. Until recently, whenever I said anything to anyone, my brain ran a scan that said, if this person turns on you, would this can they use this against you? And I would do this with everything I said with strangers. And after a while, it's like, you know what? Maybe they will, but I'm strong enough to take it. But this is not how Americans think. Or here's another one. Let me ask you this. Sorry, I'm taking over the interview. People asked about like uh, advice for work, right? Like I had this, this, there was this party I went to and basically everyone had their own problems and everyone else gave their advice, right? And someone's having a problem with the coworker, and the advice these Tupoy Americans gave them is, oh, sit down and have a talk with them. And to me, this is like the last case, last resort. 
Like first you have to see what you can without showing your hand, showing your vulnerability, only when everything hasn't worked out or you're like, all right, let me sit down with you and try to have it out with you probably. But for them, the first thing is like sit down and be like, oh, you're causing me problems and blah, blah. So I perceive that right away as a threat mm -hmm. that this person sees an antagonism between us and also as a weakness that I'm getting to them. So my reaction isn't, um, how do I make it better? My reaction is to reinforce my position and see what I can to marginalize them. Usually, I haven't worked in a corporate setting in a long time, but it's not, I don't approach it the way an American would. Like, I'm glad you came and talked to me. Now I probably would, because it's gonna be a friend. So you attribute that to the Russian upbringing as opposed to you have deep uh, psychological issues. I think uh, those are synonymous, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, am I, would you think differently maybe a few years ago? Mm, I don't know. I, I, I think you lost me at the, because you kind of said that, you're kind of implying you have a deep distrust of the world. Like the world is- I think the default setting would be distrust, yeah. But I would put it differently is I almost ignore the rest of the world. I don't even acknowledge it. I just uh, savor, I save my love and trust for the small circle of people. I agree. But when that person is being confrontational or as they perceive it as being open, now there's a situation. How do you? Ha how would you handle that? Like like a cold wind blows, you just kind of like- <laughs> Yeah, but it's not like this is an opportunity for us to work out our differences. It's a cold wind. <laughs> it's not a hug. That's my point. Yeah, Americans but I don't think see it's it. a hug. I just cold don't... <laughs> You're so suspicious. I... What it really is, is a cold wind. <laughs> I'm so inhumane. Got to, it's not, a, it's no, not but... something to be scared of. It's a cold wind. It's but... a good person. <laughs> but it's not, <laughs> this is great. But it's not a source of, like, I'm not suspicious of, like, I'm not uh, anxious, I would say, or like living in fear of the rest of the world. But I'm more... Oh, I agree. But you're not receptive to that person. Right. That's yeah. all I'm saying. And Got they it. are. 